Spend a little time today with our traps and try and explain and uh, give some idea or a different way of looking at the chains that don't allow us freedom. I think the main thing here is to look at how we grew up. What did we do? How did we do it? What were the assumptions that we made based upon our environment? Thing you want to understand. When you are a child, you think like a child. Your assumptions are those of a child. Inexperienced. You are a victim of the width of your understanding of yourself. If your household is the extent of your environment, what you see, if your mother is the extent of what you see, then you begin to accept certain attitudes that belong to her or to your father or to your brothers and your sisters. When you are a small child in arms, your entire world is probably your nursery. You grow a little, you crawl, your world becomes your house. You begin to move outside, you begin to walk, your world becomes your yard. Your world becomes your neighborhood. Each step along the way, you are making assumptions about your reality. These are the things that make me comfortable. If when I grow, all I see is people who look like me, then that is what the world is. And suddenly one day I'm outside of my world and I see someone who looks different than I. I have a reaction because now I'm outside of my comfort zone. What do I do? Do I take my comfort zone and project? Or do I allow it to expand, to encompass the new thing that I see? That is the question. Most often, most often, we reject the new thing. Question. Is this growth or is it stunting? Is it Free, or is it enslaving, reinforcing, enslaving myself? That is the question at that moment or at any moment. We want, we say, the world to be different. We want the comfort of our childhood. The world would be great if it wasn't for these other people. If it wasn't for them doing what they do, my world would be beautiful. Question. Does that make me a part of the solution or a part of the problem? I think when Hitler slaughtered six million Jews, six million Poles, he called it 
the final solution. That is not a solution. That's a problem, and you're it. So, when your view comes from inside out like that, to make it like it was when I was a child, whatever gave me that comfort, I am a problem. I am not the solution. I am a problem. Part of our problem can also be that when we are mistreated as children, when we have to beg for the attention of our parents, when they are constantly putting you down, that becomes your zone of comfort. And that's what you want from others. So you create problems so that someone gives you attention. You want the attention. doesn't matter what kind of attention. You don't want the positive attention. You want the negative attention. Me, me, me. See me. See me. So I do those things that cause the negative attention. To grow out of that attitude. When someone or something comes along and says, you must grow You must come outside of that in order to be not an enlightened person, just a grown person. We can deal with enlightenment later. Now we just want you to grow up and be an adult. Be responsible for yourself. We find this problem with our children. <laughs> they don't want to grow up. <laughs> they back mommy, 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 daddy, daddy, daddy. Argue, 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 debate, 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 debate. That is their zone of comfort. And that is what they are enslaved by. Encapsulated by. Freedom is when we reach outside of that box. When something comes along that says no. The law says no. I say no. I must live by the law because the law is the law. I like my life to be orderly. I like my life within the law. So, when people like that come along, I cannot personally invite them into my space because they want me to give them negative feedback. They want me, 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 me. Do th I'm going to do this so that you do this. Well, what you're going to do is get asked out of my presence. What the law is going to do is ask you out of its presence. Pow! And away you go. This is natural selection at work. So the POWs are there to get us to step outside the box. Ultimately, what we must do is begin to look at ourselves. Because we have been grown, we have been cultivated in a family, a race, a sex, a neighborhood, a section of the city, a city, a section of the country. We have been cultivated in these things. I want to maintain that cultivation. No, you have to outgrow your culture. Why? Because as a child you assume that it meant certain things, but you thought as a child thinks, not as an adult. 
most of the ideas that we have are ideas that someone put there when we were young or we little. Hmm. Then I am repeating what someone else has said. I'm repeating it in my mind. Now we may say the same thing. Two people. One will understand what it means and one will be a victim uh, of it. Okay. If one understands and says the sky is blue, that person understands that there's no such thing as a sky. The other says the sky is blue and will argue you down that the sky is blue. One understands it's not blue, it's the refract refraction of the blue by frequency of light against the atmosphere. The other really thinks the sky is blue. One understands and the other one doesn't, even though they say the same words. So understanding is important. Breaking outside the box is important. Breaking outside the culture is important. Because there certainly is a culture that is much greater than any restrictive culture. Any culture that is the size of your body. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Do you see black, white, brown, blonde hair, blue eyed, brown eyes, whatever it is you see? Whatever it is, kind of food you eat and you call, oh, this, this is good. Somebody else comes along and goes, wait, what the hell is that? Okay. These are cultural things. But the thing that is greater, the culture that is greater is the culture of humanity. When I stop and I take a look, at other people and other things and I see me. I see that we are the same. The things that we consider different are not different. You like spaghetti, I like collard greens. Key is that's what we grew up eating, that's what I like, what's wrong with that? I had a person once when I was in, in the educational community, they were going to have this big ball downtown and one of the hors d'oeuvres was a chitlin hors d'oeuvre. Well, why? It's because we black people, we got to have chitlin hors d'oeuvres. Well, I like chitlins. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> What's the difference in a chitlin and a blood pie? What's the difference? In <laughs> it's what we eat. Whoever you are. It's what you eat. This one eats this, this one eats that. It's just what you eat. You see, we're the same. We just call it different. And once we get past the calling, we see that. You just have what you want, I have what I want. What the hell's the difference? In those terms. But when you are small, you see those small things as great differences. So everything depends upon the size that you are when you observe it. You look at space. You say to the average person, what's there? Nothing. That can't be. Because you cannot perceive Nothing. What is there? Nothing. No. Look again. 
step outside of the box that you have been taught or that you have assumed as a child. Space is there. You can perceive it, therefore it is something called space. Hmm. Wow. Never thought of it that way. Why not? Because you have perceived of yourself as a small thing, as a child. You have thought as children think. A part of being, of growing, is thinking. Thinking. Process. Paying attention to the elements of the environment and allowing those elements huh, to tell you a truth. Listen to me very carefully. Your emotional attitudes allow you to see more or less. Your emotional attitudes allow you to see more or less. Hmm. Well, I've got to show how smart I am. You're just going to come off looking real stupid. Because your desire is to show how smart you are, not be smart about a process. I stand on this earth. I observe this earth. When I was young, I observed the people around me. What they did, I observed my community. This was very important because I'm trying to find my place. Everybody keeps telling me, you don't have a place. See, when I was a kid, I would read anything. I read the back of the Snap Crackle Pop cereal box over and over and over, the, the, the Corn Flakes box over and over and over. I read, I read, I read, I read. They used to tease me. We'd be playing baseball. I'd be in the outfield. You know, baseball is a slow game. Have a book in my back pocket. <laughs> and while they were screwing around up there, I'd be reading my book. I didn't fit. I didn't fit, number one, because I was really weird looking. When I was young, my hair was almost the color of that. Real red. And I was what they bright. <laughs> Down south, if you had a lighter skin, they didn't say light skin, they said bright skin. <laughs> okay. And I loved movies. Old English movies, and sometimes I spoke with an English accent. <laughs> so here I am, <laughs> a small town in the south, <laughs> in an all-black community of farmers. <laughs> uh, so I was not looked at as normal. There's something wrong with that boy. <laughs> and certainly was not looked at with favor by the white community. So there I was. Trying to find out where I fit. Okay, you tell me that Education is important. My attention turned to teachers, educators. And one day I was looking out the window and I was looking down from 
my classroom down into this little area where there was a pond and things grew and it hit me. Light was bouncing off of this thing and I was seeing it here because I felt it and I said it, I blurted it out to my teacher. And he said, so what? Einstein thought of that years ago. Well, I'm nine years old. Okay. It hurt my feelings because I wanted to fit this thing. Another time, I wrote an essay. There were questions they were asked. It was in, uh, I forget if it was chemistry or something like that. And... I got a B. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> we don't do Bs. <laughs> okay, not not in my house. Not if I want to survive. <laughs> we don't do Bs. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I said so. I said, the answer has to be this because of this, 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 and this. And he looked at me and he said, you're right, but you're not supposed to know that yet. Something's wrong in my mind. Once again, I don't fit. Mind being shaped emotionally. Rejection on all fronts. So I became very angry. I saw the world through anger. Okay. I was angry with this with the educational community. I had read so much by the time I got to college, I really didn't have to study. Because what they were asking me was I'd read it. I found this box of books when I was a kid. And I read them over and over and over and over and over again. Old books on mathematics, on psychology. Over and over and over and over and over again until I almost memorized everything that was there. So when you ask me a question... Okay. I want something new. I have a question. Can you answer my question? Oh, you're just being a wise ass. No, I want to know. Not fitting. Until one day I started to recognize I was okay. The questions I had and the things that I saw were okay. The things that I saw in here, in here, what they call the third eye, the internal eye. The things I saw about my environment. So, I moved from the social part and to another part of investigation. Not that I didn't participate socially, but I considered them as inferior things. So I didn't recognize the humanity in my fellow man because I didn't think my fellow man recognized my humanity. Once again, it's for them to recognize me. If they don't recognize me, then I don't recognize them. I'm smart. You're stupid. Huh. You follow the pattern. What you must see in the pattern is your pattern. I'm not talking about me, the individual, I'm talking about the experience and the process of formation of character. Formation of character, formation of idea structures. 
Of course, I stood out when I was a kid. <laughs> In a community of farmers. Here I am going by Job. <laughs> Whatever. Of course. And of course, because their consideration was things are supposed to be like this left me outside. They were outside. Each one was outside. And they were all trying to fit together. And no one fit. Because we can't fit in that manner. From that small view. That view has to constantly evolve. We look at the environment that we live in, the earth itself, the environment of the earth. How many of us even think about that? The environment of the earth, what happens, what's going on? How many of us go outside of where we are in our social life, or our social being, to see something greater, to concern ourselves with something greater. Mm. If, as the books say, we are made up of atoms, which are made up of smaller and smaller particles, and these smaller and smaller particles behave in a certain way, why is it that everything just looks like it looks to me? Well, what is the effect of these things on me and my world? What is the effect? No, we consider ourselves going around and around in a loop of social nonsense. Me trying to convince you that I'm okay. No, <laughs> I'm okay. I don't have to convince you of anything. Now I've got to see me. I see me and I go, wait a minute, I'm not okay. <laughs> I am not okay because look at what I am doing to me. Look at how I am sabotaging my world. Look at how I am sab sabotaging my dream. I am sabotaging it. I want to be happy. Well, why do I keep looking in places that are making me unhappy? It's like if I lose my car keys in the house, why am I looking for them out in the yard? I have to look where I lost them. In here. This is where I have to look. I have searched for the enemy and I have found him and he is us. He is me. By the same token, when we investigate, we see the face of God. And what you see is your face looking back at you. Ultimately, that is what you find. Wow. So, you are both enemy and friend. You are both. At your essence, you are that that is. You are all that is because there can be nothing more than all that is. And I realize that that is frightening to some people. That's blasphemy. But when you think about it, you think about God or whatever you want to call it. If God is all there is, what does it have to create you from? Only itself. Because that's all there is. Well, he sits around, let me create some inferior crap <laughs> and put it out there and call it people. Let me create something to create something from. What? 
see, we, we, we say that it is that which we cannot understand. That's not true. We think illogically. We are unreasonable in our process. And we come to these points and we say, well, God can't be understood. Well, it can if you follow that lane, that 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 line of thinking. It can only create from itself because that's all there is. There is no more. Therefore, when I look into its face, what do I see? Me looking back, with all the power that is, and we don't want that power because it makes us absolutely responsible for what we do. So we stay locked in our small worlds. We stay locked in a prison that was created, whose foundation was laid by the time we were two years old, emotionally. You have the power of creation. The power of creation is within everyone, and you do create whether you like it or not. But you are. And when you create it from the attitude of a child, what are you creating? Childishness. Look at your world. Look at your world. Our political system, the idea of it is great. The reality of it sucks. We buy our politicians. Um, then who are they going to favor? The person who bought them. We will look. The average person, well, I'm a Republican. I am a Democrat. Huh. Well, I'm going to vote for this person no matter what. Hmm. We're not exercising thinking. We are just reacting and we complain. Don't you see what they're doing? Don't you see what's happening between big money and your government? Thinking allows you to see and change what you don't like. But if you are still caught emotionally in your stuff, then you are creating more boxes just like that. When you hide, when you are doing something and you want to hide it inside, of course you're going to elect those who have hidden agendas because you, you think it's okay to hide because you think no one sees you. Shh, everybody sees you. Everybody. There's nothing to hide. There is nothing to hide when you do. Now, that doesn't mean you go around blabbing everything to everybody. That's not what that means. It means hiding. Remember, when you set up walls to keep other people out, you set up walls to keep you in. The energy can't flow. It's supposed to flow naturally. We look at it. I want to be with them. I want to have a group to belong to. My question is, why? Why that group? You see, there's a group I want to belong to. It's called thinkers. <laughs> it's called character. 
<laughs> That's the group. That's my gang. These are the guys I want to hang out with. It's called lovers. People who love, who use their intelligence. That's my gang. That's my group. Unfortunately, the price of entry into the group is too high for most of us. The price of entry is giving up your ignorance, giving up the emotionalism, using our love and intelligence. Huh. That's the price of changing this whole system of doing things, whole way of doing things. Now let's go back. Out of all the, the examples of stuff that I use and the way I talk about ways of thinking, it's unimportant. <laughs> Those things are not what is important in this process. That thing which creates change is what is important. Because the change itself brings about new ideas and new thoughts automatically because at the nature of humankind is goodness take out one oath from goodness I said there's only one God goodness that thing that we all are is only it so when you get behind the thing that doesn't allow you to use your true nature, when you get behind it, you can only use your true nature. Intelligence, love, understanding. It's automatic. But you have to get behind the other stuff. You have to scrape that away. That's the darkness. That allows you only to see very small things. It allows our view to be like this. Wow. Hmm. What do we want to do? Because now you create your reality. Now what do we want to create our reality with? Darkness or light? Light means I see. When you are in darkness, what do you do? You stumble around and this and that. and It doesn't look right. It doesn't come out right. But when you shine a light, the light of intelligence and the light of love, we now see. We now have the blocks in which to truly build upon. But only then. And it's a reality. Now we think... We have a lot of various degrees of mental illness. And believe it or not, most of us are mentally ill. Yeah. It's true. Because we allow emotionalism to get in the way of truth. And when we do that, we do things that are absolutely irrational. That's mentally ill. That's not healthy. Not healthy for the individual, not healthy for the society, not healthy for humanity as a whole. Now, we have to come back to the issue. What is the problem? The problem is not what I think. I keep trying to change what I think. You cannot change what you think. You can't do that. Because all that ends up doing is causing suppression. And suppression makes you what? Crazier and crazier. Okay. No, you can't do that. That's not the issue. 
The issue is to change the mechanism by which one thinks. So, if we're not doing that, we're not making a difference in here. People come back to me all the time after having done something really stupid and say, well, you told us this. No, what I told you was this. That was an example of what happens when you get clean. Not, don't get the cart before the horse. And I say it over and over again. You want it for real, you have to change the energy flow. How do you do that? You have to break the cycle, the energy cycle that brings about these things. So, you know, you got this stuff about, oh, uh, what do they call it? Positive reinforcement? What is that? Yeah. That affirmations. Let me say this. Let me say that. What? You still have the same automatic mechanism under that that is creating your reality. So what you repeat is not. That's not working. It's not working for you. You have to change the energy flow. All the things that I say about that is just a result of having changed the energy flow, having changed the mechanism inside. So what is natural comes forward. And I naturally, there are certain things I naturally won't do. Just when I go do it. Can't do it. Don't want to do it. Have no reason to do it. I have no reason to want to sit up and debate and argue with a moron. That makes me moronic. To get into arguments and debates, that makes no sense to me. What we're dealing with is going to, if we look at all the elements of it, and we are honest about those elements, that's what's going to solve the problem. When I was teaching, I read an article from 1932 on what was wrong with the Chicago Public Schools. 1932. I think I read this article in probably 70... Six seventy-seven, somewhere around there. A new report came out. It could have been the same report. 1932, 1970s. Nothing had changed. Our education system has not changed. It still hasn't changed because we want to sit around and debate instead of looking at what really works. Things have changed. Let's look at what really works. Let's look at the systems that teach people to think as opposed to the systems that teach them what to think. Let's look at what causes the process to go on. Now we're talking about changing education. A study done with, in Japan. They beat the socks off of us in terms of educational programs at that time. Consistently, across the board, there's only one problem. We had a higher rate of genius than they did. Why? Because what they did was you will learn this, 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 and everybody could do that by rote, but where was the creativity? You know, we can say what we want about Americans. We got this Wild West attitude, and it contributes to 98% of us being stupid, but 1% genius. Okay, now we have to think about that. We have to look at that and say, now what makes this happen? 
Oh, it's hereditary. Well, everybody's a genius. What is the problem? The problem is the emotionalism. Now, if that is the problem, this is the automatic response mechanism, what is it we have to do to change that? We have to change the mechanism within the individual. And guess what? Only the individual can do that. And must be willing to do that, must be willing to explore, to look at, this is my life, and this is the way I think. Whoa. This must be seen by the individual. People are angry with me all the time because they say, well, Ananda, tell me what's wrong with me. You sure? You sure? Yeah. Well, here you go. Now you're mad at me. <laughs> you see, that's your job. That is the individual's job to see for themselves because only then does the light go off inside. And that's what we're here about. We're about the light going off inside. Self-recognition. Self-determination. It's about self. I have to. I have to want to know you know, when I went to my, my biology teacher when I was a kid and said, explain to me why a bullet just making your hole in your heart will kill you. And he looked at me like, what? No, I, I'm asking you a real question. It just makes a hole. Explain to me why. What's the mechanism that happens when that bullet goes through, the, what happens? Well, I'm a kid. It's a serious question. Why? 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 Why is it back in the biblical days, God was showing up everywhere? God and angels and all these people, they just, just walking down the street, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? You know, they all in Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, what y'all doing over here? Oh, you liking men? Huh? We going to bring down fire from heaven on you. Right? Every time an angel showing up, some woman getting pregnant, I'm wondering, where are all these people today? Hmm. I'm wondering how Mary explained to Jesus, I mean to Joseph, there's his baby coming, and we haven't done anything mm -hmm. under it. Now, ladies, you, you explain this to me. You go to your man and say, I'm pregnant, <laughs> and you two haven't done anything. What's it, what do you think he's going to say to you? Oh, that's all right. God did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> you know, I've got these questions. Why is this? Okay. Why is it this guy is walking along and he hears a rumble and there's a fire coming out of a chariot in the sky and a ladder drops down and he climbs up it and goes to heaven whole soul and body. Still looking. When is that going to happen again? Something's wrong here. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I have to think. Why is it certain books were left out of the Bible? Hmm, who decided that? 
Hmm. See, I have a question. When he did this, what happened to the word of God? I don't know. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. We have to look at it a different way. We have to think about it a different way. What's going on here? What's really happening? And we have to follow that path and take, let that path take us where it goes. See, I have to question God. I have to question who I think I am. And then I've got to question God. The one that they put in my head. That guy. Not what exists, but the guy that they put in my head. I've got to question. And I've got to question the devil. I've got to question that guy. And I've got to question these stories. Let me go and find out. Reggie White was a defensive lineman in the NFL for a long time, big time Christian, Southern Christian. And Reggie finally decided, wait a minute, let me learn Hebrew and let me go back and read for myself. All the Christians turned on him so fast because he began to understand some of what was going on. Whoa, made a difference. It's like I told you about the kid that killed his brother. Not Adam and Eve, but hey, Bruce Cain and Abel. Steve, yeah. <laughs> Cain, and, <laughs> Cain and Abel. Cain means love of form. Abel means breath of God. Tell you anything? Tell you anything about the story? Tell you anything about Adam and Eve? One man, one woman. Oh, that's why we all retarded. <laughs> all that incest going on. Let's think about. Let's think about what we've been told, and let's pay attention. You see, the laws are the laws that are God. They don't exist outside of God. Nothing exists outside of God. Hmm. Well, this whole thing about DNA and all... Message from one... One transmitted from one to another to another to another. And when there's only two people and you keep doing that, you get retardation. Look at it. So we've got to ask another question. Stepping outside the box. <sighs> wow. Wow. That is why there are few true representatives of what is real. Few of them in history. There are a lot claiming, but few who really understand. Very few. Because you have to step outside the box. You have to step outside of your box and then step outside of the box. See, I've got to stand on the earth and look to the stars. Albert Einstein says, time travel is possible. What? How can this be? No, it's not possible. Well, let me, let me, let me see what he's saying. Oh. You want to go back in time? Hmm. How can you do that? 
Well, there's an example of a quark that arrives. It's a subatomic particle, but it arrives before it leaves in its pair. That doesn't make any sense. May not make any sense, but is it a reality? So it doesn't make sense to who? To the way I'm thinking about it. Okay, let's just say. Let's just say a particle of light travels at 200,000 miles per second. It doesn't, 186,000 miles per second. But let's just say it because it's easier on an old man with the math. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember this shit too well. Let's say the Earth is 20,000 miles around. It's not, but let's just say. Let's keep it at tens. Okay. It will go around the Earth ten times in one second. Ten times. Wow. Well, suppose I accelerate that to 400,000 miles per second. Then it will go around the Earth five times in a second, right? So as you increase the speed, the amount of times that it goes around decreases. Until you finally increase it to where it's here, and then all of a sudden you increase the speed, it's here. So before it leaves, it's back. And that is what it does. Wow. But now if you start, if you keep That's looking at any of your prog progression, if you keep looking at it as, I don't see how that's happened. I just showed you how it happens. Now, do you want to believe it? Do you want to trust it or not? You got to come time and say, well, wait a minute. Now, that's the law. <sighs> okay. I got to step outside the box. Because that's the law. See, how can something be in two places at the same time? They did the experiment. One particle of light, two slits. That one particle that they shot went through both slits at the same time. How is this possible? Maybe it's because you are saying it's not possible when you're looking at it happening. So the answer is not, I don't believe it. <laughs> you just saw it. Okay, the guy doing the experiment just saw it. Just had it show up on that piece of negative behind both slits and shot one photon. Huh. Well, maybe my assumption is incorrect. Maybe I've got to start looking differently now. It's impossible to to be back before you leave only when you think of reality the way you think of reality. So now you've got to question reality. You've got to question, wait a minute, what is really going on here? In science, it, say, it tells us you don't see what you think you see. Light bounces back to your eye, your brain your brain puts it together and tells you what you see. So, mixed in with all your emotional crap, what you see turns out to be a lie. Because only when you don't see it through all that do you see it for what it is. got into a debate about auras. And I have to admit, the guy listened. In the East, they call it an aura. Let's just call it energy. Energy given off by the body. Energy given off by the body every minute because you digest food. That energy comes off. 
Now, the, the kind of tension that you hold in your body determines the vibrational frequency of the energy, which determines the color. Over there, they call it a, an aura. I can look at your aura and tell what's wrong with you. Yeah, if you're like this, <laughs> the energy comes off real red because you're all tight and you've made it, that vibration into a long way and it comes off red. Well, how do you see it? I don't know. Meditate. And then don't look directly at something. You'll see it. And then you go, what was that? Well, it's called an aura. It's like, oh, yeah. All it required was different thinking about it. See, I'm a scientist, and I've never seen anything called an aura. That's because the energy didn't jump off and say, hi, I'm aura. Somebody named it. These are just names that people give stuff. They speak different languages. A person who speaks Arabic will say Allah. But if you speak English, you say God. What's the difference? Well, we can't be bothered with no Allah. Are you a moron? It's about language. You called it what you called it because of the way you put your language together. Step outside the box. Outside of the cultural box. Come to being what you are. You are that great consciousness that put all this together. Step outside the small box of consciousness. Outside. How can moving like that at that speed cause time to change? Well, time is related. It's called the space-time continuum. Without space, there is no time. So if you warp space, you have warped time. Say, so how can you warp space? Speed and mass. We know that gravity is a warping of space. Pressing down and keeping you down on the planet. There's some other stuff involved, but that's generally what it is. Warping space. Look at the way it developed. I stand on the planet. It goes from hard to softer to softer to softer. They all react the same way. If you look at the tectonic plates on the earth, what do they do? They shift. They move. The earth is spinning in a circle. The plates move. Oh, wow. If you churn in water, what does the water do? You get two different degree temperatures of water. It swirls. Oh, what's a tornado? Swirling air. Oh, then why is it space doesn't do the same thing? They're just degrees of density. So space warps. If you warp it at, with mass, something the size of the Earth, or something the size of the sun, it warps enough space to keep all these planets at a distance around it. It's big. Oh, it's big. Okay? But it warps space in that way. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. So, in essence, when man moves through space walking, he's warping space, isn't he? 
hmm, son of a gun. Then he's moving through time. But I had a big gap in between the yeah. two parts. The thing about that is that it's it's when you, and this is this is still related to your consciousness now. The thing is, you are created in that environment, and that law is within you. So subconsciously, right. when you dip your crackers in, it just, just kind of goes in that circle because that's in your DNA. Right. You don't have to think about it; it's in your DNA. So all the law, all the laws are within you. So what you need to do is sit down, the whole human race, sit down, shut up, and let it tell you. See, it will tell you everything within you. That's why meditation is important. It will answer those questions about the law. And you see how those relate to you as a conscious being other than just a physical being. You are created within that, in that environment. It's all in you. Yeah. Kevin. Two questions. The first is, can you speak about the relationship between energy and uh, love? And um, the, the other second question is, is there a way to have the effect of gravity without mass? Without mass? No. Now, go back to the first question. Energy and love. Love is felt as energy. Love is a fine, a very fine, whew, what, do you, what do I want to call it? <laughs> it's a very fine substance, but yet is a substance. It is like when you go, when I said you go from like tectonic plates, you go from that, your next level of, of, uh, of uh, mass would be water, finer, the next finer would be air, the next finer would be space, the next finer would be intelligence, the next finer would be love. They are all particles, real particles. Peace. Peace. Same thing. Peace is, they are, see the thing about it is they are real things and you can't feel the density of these things until you get from behind all the assumptions about this. This is what happens when you let go. You don't let go and become morose. You let go and you feel all. Oh, you begin to feel the weight of love. You begin to feel the weight of intelligence. I don't mean weight, but the density, the, 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 the thickness of it. You begin to feel intelligence. Not intelligent, but intelligence, because it is a thing. It's just a finer vibration of things. Now, everything depends upon your view of how small or large you are. And the more you cut down, drop the walls in here, you become larger. Therefore, you can feel larger things. At the same time, you become smaller. Therefore, you can feel smaller things. You see, if you stood on a on a, 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 a photon, okay? If you stood on, no, let's say, let's take it down to a smaller particle. Uh, a, um, what's that thing I mentioned a while? A quark. If you stood on that, a photon would look like the sun. So you would be able to sense things from that level, but that would be your norm. So now as you come up to where you are now, you sense things in a certain way. Once you get from behind this, you can sense the whole range of things. You experience the whole range of it. You experience godliness. That whole range is godliness. 
Yeah, the whole range. It there is that's all there is. So that whole range, I've said to you before, and this is one of the things I had hoped you would figure out. You are a sender receiver in here. This thing sitting in your skull is a sender receiver. Okay? You are received into the body. You are not contained within the body. You are received, constantly received into the body. That's why you have to open up. And the more you open up, the more you can be received through your brain and your nervous system. And you feel more of the range of things. So love, energy, is one expression of the particle of love. Love is a particle. It's all a particle. It's just a final particle, that's all. When you get to think too much, everything is gross. I don't mean yuck gross, I mean gross, mass-wise. When you get rid of this, the mass doesn't have that weight. So you begin to see it differently. Once you are no longer who you think you are. You think you're Kevin, you're carrying weight. You're carrying weight. Out of all the things, you know, you, you're you smarter, you're not smarter, you're tall or you're short or whatever those ideas are. You see what I'm saying? That's weight and does not allow you to perceive the reality, the truth. Yes. So it's it's important to let go of all those things. If you really want to know. If you really want to know. If you really want to know, I can't care. See, now the, here's, here's, a, here's a tricky thing. I'm going to say it, but it's tricky because some of us. You really, on this search for truth, you really can't care what those who do not search for truth think of you. That's as careful as I can say. Because I'll say, you really can't care what others think of you, and that gives some people license to be assholes. <laughs> you know, even when somebody's trying to help them. You know, well, I can't care what you think, well then, go get hit by a bus, I don't know. <laughs> It gives license, but I'm saying you can't care what people who do not invest themselves in learning the truth care. Well, you can't anyway, because if you're looking for the truth, and see, there are laws to looking for the truth. There's a law. A law is you cannot carry your stuff into it. That's the law, because you can't see the truth. And if the truth is what you're looking for, why would you want to lie to yourself? See it for what it is. For what it is brings joy. It brings peace. It brings understanding. And the ability to change the world. Thank you for your time. Enjoy. Peace out.